Welcome to Cooks for Kids, brought to you by the National Food Service Management Institute, located at the University of Mississippi, and the USDA Food and Nutrition Service. We believe that children should be able to make healthy food choices wherever they are, at home, in school, and in the community. Since the National School Lunch Program was enacted in 1946, this country has looked to its schools to provide children with a nutritious lunch and often breakfast as well. We have also relied on our schools to teach our children nutrition basics, both in the serving line and in the classroom. Each episode of Cooks for Kids showcases recipes, techniques, and practical solutions that schools can adopt to prepare healthier and tastier meals. Coming up on this edition of Cooks for Kids, chefs move to schools. We'll take you to a school district where a French chef has figured out fun ways to get local seasonal vegetables on the menu all year long. She'll share some amazing recipes with us, along with tips for using them in your school. We'll show you how a fun farm-to-school program is getting even the pickiest eaters to try healthy vegetables. And we'll take you into the school garden as students get a hands-on lesson in how food moves from the dirt to the dinner table. That's all just ahead on Cooks for Kids. Hello and welcome to Cooks for Kids, Chefs Move to Schools, the program that takes you across the country to see how schools, chefs, and farmers are teaming up to provide healthier meals for school children. On today's show, we're taking you to Wisconsin. Agriculture is the state's top industry. Known as America's Dairyland, Wisconsin is the nation's largest producer of cheese and second in milk production. It also leads the nation in production of cranberries, growing almost half of the total U.S. crop. The largest farmer's market in the country is also located in Wisconsin's state capital of Madison. And it's no wonder, considering the wide variety of fruits and vegetables grown here. In rural Viroqua, about 30 miles from La Crosse, a chef, teacher, award-winning cookbook author, and cooking show host has teamed up with the local school district to bring a wider selection of fresher and healthier menu items to the cafeteria. Among the new offerings, the traditional French vegetable dish called ratatouille. At Viroqua Middle and High Schools, Chef Monique Hooker is a familiar sight in the cafeteria. I look at it, the restaurant, and I think every school needs a professional chef involved at some level uh, to help them through the process. After retiring to Viroqua from Chicago, Chef Hooker started wondering how she could help connect local farmers to local schools. So much food stayed in the field, and I said, let's make ratatouille. But first, she had to train the staff how to use all those fresh ingredients. When I showed up with 35 pounds of garlic, and they looked at it and said, oh my goodness, what do we do with this? And now they can do it by themselves. So the idea is to come and do something and move away from it and let them take propriety of the project. Monique has really given the staff a level of confidence that they can go out and do this on their own. and. They've learned the skills from her. They launched what Chef Hooker calls the fifth season. In Wisconsin, the vegetables are harvested in the summer when school is out. So the school buys and processes the vegetables then. We're only gonna slice, dice, and chop it. So we are able to utilize seconds and even thirds in some cases, which makes it more affordable for us. In just one day, they make a huge batch of ratatouille which they freeze and use in a variety of dishes throughout the school year. It's actually a very efficient, very simple process. We use some vegetables in our ratatouille that are, we don't usually see on the, the fresh fruit and veggie bars. We use eggplant, we use the summer squashes, zucchinis, tomatoes, we use onions and lots of garlic, and basically whatever is available in surplus at that time. In a few minutes, we'll show you how to make the ratatouille and the ratatouille pizza the school is serving today. And I'd say that's probably my favorite meal. They have a ratatouille pizza that's just stacked with good veggies from our area. I really like having the meals feel unique and not just like it's another school lunch day or it's the same thing. To offset any increased cost, they also are serving USDA diced chicken as an entree option with gravy and mashed potatoes. And there's fresh asparagus. We just wash it and 
chop it, drizzle a little olive oil over and roast it and right out to the serving line. It was really good. I liked how they cooked it. Our fresh fruit and vegetable bar um, incorporates fresh fruits and fresh vegetables every day. They have carrots and apples, uh, spinach, lettuce, tomato. We try to incorporate some things that are familiar but also some different things. We have black beans and garbanzo beans every day and um, we're seeing them eating more of those on a daily basis. We have an open campus and they could drive away and go have lunch somewhere else and they choose to eat here and I think one of the reasons is because of choices. High school students get to hone their own culinary skills through the county's Harvest Challenge. Student teams work with chef mentors and using locally grown products compete to see who can develop the best meals that meet all the requirements of the National School Lunch Program. It stops you from saying, oh, why don't they just cook this deluxe meal? Um, because it's, it's much harder on a, on a large scale and much more extensive. Just how much goes into creating a school lunch, you know, I had no idea. And it's much easier before that knowledge to kind of criticize and say, oh, you know, they could do so much better. During a community gala tasting event, the student team serve their meals to local celebrity judges, friends, and parents. Parents that maybe in the past have been quite critical have now become some of our best supporters. And Chef Hooker believes any other schools that get chefs involved in their nutrition programs can see similar successes. The time that it takes for them to be involved, it's not very much, uh, but it is an important time. The Harvest Challenge not only gives students a chance to cook with local chefs, it also serves as a fundraiser to help the school pay for the fresh fruits and vegetables it buys. Now, let's head back to the cafeteria kitchen at Viroqua, where Chef Hooker is going to show us how simple it can be to make ratatouille. The reason we are sh choosing ratatouille is because our farmers, our producers, our local producers, have lots of these vegetables, don't know what to do with them many times. And most of all, we do not buy the first grade vegetables because we're going to be processing it. We're going to slice it and we do not peel vegetables. Vegetables are nicely clean. You wash and process them and wash them very nicely after you receive them. And the peel, of course, add colors, add flavor, add texture and nutrition. So once we push through, adding your vegetable to that is very, very simple. As you can see, so for, so for the staff in the kitchen, it's very simple. They don't have to use their knife. Now, the next vegetable we're going to do to go to Hatatui is the pepper. You know, you, you're trying to find a nice little dimple right here, and you press it like this. And when you press it, it just comes apart. And that's the best way to process your, your, your peppers. You don't have to use a knife. The seeds come right out. The little stem comes right out. You don't waste anything. So squeeze it a little bit so it fits right in. No recipe is good without onions. So once it cut into quarter, the same thing, it goes right through it. Push it hard. Last thing you're going to add to your um, ratatouille are tomatoes. I suggest to use as much as possible the plum tomato because they're not as juicy, they're very meaty. To do the tomato, uh, use a dicer, we're going to use a dicer a little, a little while, but otherwise by hand you can just do it this way too and just dice them up like this and, and it's a good time to learn how to hold your knife, okay, when you're doing this, okay. So holding our knife like this with our hands around it, two fingers like this and our three, hand, three fingers around the handle makes it very safe. Now, the only thing that's missing in here is an eggplant. An eggplant does not go through a slicer because when we did the first year, we learned a lesson. We just dice them like this. We just slice them like this. Well, guess what? In Ratatouille, they were too big. And a lot of the kids would not eat the Ratatouille because they thought this was mushroom. So, what we did this next year, we bought a different machine. The dicing machine cuts them really small, like little dice, uh, hash brown potato size. And they go right in the ratatouille and the kids love it. This is what your ratatouille looks like after it's all been sliced and diced. So look at the colors. So to do to finish a ratatouille, we're gonna take a sheet pan and we're gonna layer them 
And the reason I'm doing this is because they all cook it differently, they all roast differently. If you were to mix them all up, some vegetable will exude too much juice and, pre and prevent the other vegetables to really cook properly and caramelize properly. Pressed garlic is very helpful, very healthy and very nutritional too, so something to add to it. So you're going to take the head of garlic like this and you're going to take it apart so you can just eat it, take the clove apart. Do not peel them, just let the loose, loose leaf around like this. And what you're gonna do, you're gonna put this in the steamer. The minute it comes out of the steamer or out of the hot water, make sure you put it right away into ice water. Why is that? For two reasons. First, it's safe. You're not gonna handle garlic that's very hot. You can burn yourself. Two, it also makes it easier to peel. And you can just press on it and it pops right out. So once you've done that, you're gonna mince that. There we are. And you're gonna sprinkle that on the top of your vegetable. This is basil. So basil, again, you sprinkle that on the top. The same thing, we're going to use oregano now. And then we're going to have a little thyme. Last one is a little bit of oil. There's a drizzle of oil like this. And this is going to go in the oven. Okay, so now the ratatouille just came out of the oven. We let it cool down to room temperature. Do not handle it while it's hot. Uh, is very important and we're going to mix very gently mix all this do not crush it whatever so when you're mixing make sure you lift everything up to, together like this just mix it a few times take your vegetables very gently put them in there and this is going to go in the freezer make sure you put the date that you put it in the freezer so you know how long has it been there and in a little while I'm, I'll be back to show you how to make a ratatouille pizza a stromboli and a wrap but right now, let's visit the Wisconsin family who supplies the vegetables for Viroqua School's Ratatouille as part of a Farm to Schools program. Farm to School connects schools and local farms with the objectives of serving healthy meals in school cafeterias, improving student nutrition, providing agriculture, health and nutrition education opportunities, and supporting local and regional farmers. What started as a part-time hobby in 2000 became a full-time business for the Eddy family. Boy, just more of a love of having a big garden and uh, kept expanding. Their Ridgeland Harvest Organic Farm has grown from just one acre to 20. We grow everything from asparagus, um, all of the zucchini, sweet corn, you know, all the favorites to some of the more diverse uh, fennel, celery root and a different culinary herb. When Viroqua schools approached them about supplying vegetables for the school cafeteria, both parties had a lot of questions. The school wanted to know, can you supply what we need when we need it and meet our food safety standards? We've done site visits to look at the practices of the farmer and the harvesters. We also have utilized resources available to schools that include um, questionnaires, food safety standards. The Eddies wanted to know, can you pay the price small farmers like us need? And can you buy in the summer when we harvest? The solution that worked for both parties was providing vegetables for the school to make its fifth season ratatouille. So we felt strongly about finding a way to make something happen, you know, a way to contribute or or just to try to get that relationship established, you know. I think if we want to change the system, we need to compromise on our end a little bit too and, and be willing to work with them. For us, it's more important than a dollar figure. To be able to work from, you know, really the ground up, our kids up, to be able to have them grow up and learn how to eat vegetables. That learning process continues in the cafeteria. Asparagus salad, okay? Yes! It has olive juice, or... Olive oil, lemon juice, Parmesan cheese. Bjorn Bergman is an AmeriCorps worker whose job is to coordinate the farm to school program and help teach the students about nutrition in several ways, including monthly vegetable tastings. What do you guys think? Any, you like it? I like it. Okay. When I do a tasting, I always have the kids eat it raw. I don't want to, I want them to actually know what it tastes like without all kinds of ranch and ketchup and stuff on it. Did you like the roasted stuff? That was pretty good. Yeah. Would you like to see that in the lunch line more? Oh, yeah. Yeah? Chef Hooker says these tastings are a key to getting the students to accept more fruits and vegetables on the school menu. And a little peer pressure doesn't hurt. 
the girls didn't want to taste it. Let's, let's have the football team do it first, you know. So the football people were put under pressure and they had to taste it. And they liked it and the kids said, oh, okay, then we'll eat it too. That's all it took. The tasting is part of a Harvest of the Month program, which features a different locally grown fruit or vegetable each month. I've tasted some squash, um, I've tasted pumpkin, I've tasted some asparagus. In addition to the monthly tastings, the Harvest of the Month is served in the cafeteria and discussed in the classroom. So for this month, uh, the kids got to learn all about asparagus and they got to learn about how it's grown as we talk about why it's good for them. And then at the end of the lesson, I share a recipe with them that they can bring home to their parents and be like, thank you so much for what you do. Like, my, my son or daughter was the most picky eater before, and now they're just eating all this crazy stuff I never would have imagined they would eat. Students fill out electronic surveys to help organizers gauge the success of the Farm to School program and nutrition lessons. But Viroqua school officials say they don't need any survey results to tell them it's working. Participation in our breakfast and lunch programs has increased. Uh, it, from my office, the calls have stopped. Um, so it's recognized that it's a good thing for our students, it's a good thing for our community, very good thing for our school. And a good thing for local farmers like the Eddies. For us, being able to feed other people's children feels really good. We definitely hope to, to expand the relationship. I think that would be great. So now that you've seen where Viroqua schools get the local vegetables for their ratatouille, and earlier you saw how they make the ratatouille and freeze it, now Chef Hooker will show us how to use it to make a ratatouille pizza that children will love. This is just came out of the refrigerator and we're going to take this now and prepare it to make a pizza with it. So to do that you must strain it. So I have here is a strainer and a bowl right here. And you must get that over the strainer and let it drain a little bit. Because if you don't, if you don't let it drain, you're going to end up using a lot of these juices in your pizza, and you're going to end up with a really soggy pizza. And I tell you, that's not what the kids want. So don't make that mistake. But the nice thing about this, all these juices that you find here, we use it in making soup. We use it in the tomato, tomato sauce. So it's not wasted. So the flavors are still in there, and it helps you add flavor to your soup as well. So you can see already in just a minute or so, that's already got a good two cups of juices there. So shake it up a little bit. Do not crush it. Do not go in there with a spoon or a spatula. Do not crush it. Just shake it up a little bit and then let it drain a little bit. We're using bread. We partially bake our bread, that we, the bread dough that we get here. We partially bake it. This is where you can see it's a little, crushy, a little crusty here. And it helps absorb some of that juice. So the bread becomes soft, but yet at the same time it's baked on the bottom very nice and brown. So what you're going to do now is just take some of, some of that vegetables, just spread it around, and again, use your uh, food cost. Of course, you have to think about your food cost and your portion size. All that has to be applied here for nutritional value, for food cost value, and uh, so we make just one layer of vegetables, and we're going to spread that out nicely, and you can see I still have a little bit of juice on the bottom. And as you do this, also do not crush your vegetables. Just spread them out. Make sure you're nice and even. That someone says, and notice if you can really look at the camera closely, I don't think you can see the eggplants in here. And that's the important part. So I can smell the garlic. I can smell all the herbs. And we talked about the herbs, the three sisters, okay, which is oregano, thyme, and basil. Now we're going to finish that with a little bit of mozzarella cheese. And don't put too much cheese. Cheese is something, I mean, we have to control the fat in our diet. So we just put a little bit of cheese on the top just to give it a little bit more flavor. So you are training a new palate here. You're training your children to taste something different, something new. And it takes a couple times to try it. The first time we did it, we, we were not very successful. But it was somewhat successful. But it became, after the second time, the third time, now they ask for it. Now they look forward to our Ratatouille pizza day. So there's the pizza, and then it goes in the oven. There you go. Here's your final product, the Ratatouille pizza, and the kids are going to eat it up. Chef Hooker will be back in a few minutes with more recipes you can use in your school. But first, let's look at more ways they're promoting healthy eating. 
Fifth and sixth graders at Viroqua Middle School love working in the school's small garden. Oh, I think it's fun to like dig and plant in. Science teacher Sue Berg started the garden as a way to bring lessons to life. Reading about science is sterile. It, it, it isn't, you have to connect it to the real world somehow. But they learn about more than just botany. They learn about growing and eating nutritious food. And you'd think most kids would know how food is grown. But it's amazing what they don't realize or know. Is that shives good for you? Yes. Yes, yes they help you. Today, Chef Hooker is in the garden to teach children about cooking with fresh herbs. And what do they do? Give it flavor. They really emphasize and intensify their connection to the food and what it takes to grow that food. And then rub it between your fingers like this and smell it now. Wow! I use sensory. I use a lot of eyes, smell, touch, hear. We listen to uh, the crispiness of the vegetables. We look at the different colors of kale. And the best thing to do with this kale is to rip the leaves off and put it in the oven and let it dry and eat it like potato chips. Oh, wow. The only way those kids are going to learn if they have to have their hands on it. And if they're part of it, uh, they are more likely to eat it. And I can see the radish in the making. We talk about the nutritional value of vegetables and how vegetables are important in their plate. Chicken, 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 chicken. Okay, everybody go, wow. It's really fun going out there and um, helping out with the garden. Like, we get to do stuff out there, and we usually always eat something when we're out there. Wow, did we have a good time yet? Yeah. 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 Each fall, during a community garden harvest festival, groups of fifth graders cook a variety of dishes using vegetables from the garden. I'll tell you, they get in the kitchen, they love it. They, they, and they're much more likely to try things. They try those dishes that have artichokes and, I mean, squash and all kinds of stuff, and they are amazed at how good it is. Naomi Schrader's group made a cake using beets. Well, it kind of just tasted like chocolate cake, just it was healthier. That's what this is all about, is changing kids' attitude toward food, trying new things. Back in class, the students keep garden journals about what they've learned, and for one assignment, even design their own dream garden. Maybe when they're an adult, they'll think back, oh yeah, fifth grade garden, wow, we grew so many neat things, I should have a garden. You know, and just, I hope that that influence can be felt for many, many years down the road. Now, here's Chef Hooker once more to demonstrate three other nutritious entrees that you can make in your school using ratatouille. So uh, at school here, we've chosen to do first a wrap. And what uh, we do, we use a, a tortilla. So refried beans, you should think about it. So we take some refried beans, which is very good for the children because we are adding a legume now to this vegetable dish. So spread it very nicely. Don't go all the way to the edge, but almost to the edge. Just like you would do a, almost a quesadilla if you wanted to do it that way. And it's really easy because the kids like to have this. They can hand and hold them with their fingers. They can, we, sometimes we put a dip out for them to use, like a cucumber dip, a cucumber dip or something like that. And then add your vegetables on the top. And again, the vegetable, make sure they are, we, we strain them. When they come out of the freezer, we strain the vegetables. And then just lay the vegetables out like this. And then we're going to finish that with cheese. Press it gently so everything can stick together and hold it up. And just hold it up like this. And there is your wrap. And then you bake that in the oven for about 15, 20 minutes. The next thing I'm going to show you is how to make a stromboli. So we're taking a pizza dough or bread dough if you want to, and we're going to stuff this and roll it up. So again, we're taking the ratatouille, which has been draining, and we're going to Fill it up. Now, don't go all the way to the edge here. You need an edge over here to really seal your vegetable in. So spread it two-thirds of the way, okay, two-thirds around. We're going to finish that with a little bit of cheese. And definitely here you could put a little Parmesan cheese if you want to. So here we are. Now you're going to take this and you're going to roll it. So just roll it very nicely like this. Don't make it too tight. The bread is going to, the bread is going to rise a little bit. And what I do at the end, just like this, just press it down a little bit. 
and then just seal the end. Just tuck it under like this so the ends are really nicely tucked under. We're gonna brush this with a little bit of oil before we bake it, before we put it in the oven. And then slice it like this. So you can slice it to serve. We'll slice it at an angle like this and you can count your portions. So here we have very easily 10 serving in one of these, very easily. Voila. If you'd like more information about anything you've seen on the program today, go to nfsmi.org for access to the Cooks for Kids handouts. That's our show for today. We hope you enjoyed our visit to Wisconsin and the delicious recipes from Chef Monique Hooker. I'm Lorraine Cachola, and we'll see you next time on Cooks for Kids, Chefs Move to Schools. Mm -hmm.